have a question for everyone. Who in here has a smartphone? A lot of you. I love my smartphone. It's like a daily movie of pictures, inspirations, updates, everything I could ever want. I feel so connected. Now, just imagine. It's 10 a.m., New Year's Day. You had an incredible night before with your friends, your families, talking about your New Year's resolutions and how you get to start this year with a clean slate. Everything's wonderful. When all of a sudden, you receive a Twitter notification. Open it up, and you see a photo of yourself naked, staring back at you, up on the internet for all the world to see. That happened to me, posted by my ex-boyfriend on January 1st, 2015. My whole world collapsed beneath me in a matter of seconds. Can you imagine how you would feel? Can you imagine? I felt a tsunami of feelings rush over me. I felt shame, guilt, remorse, anger, fear, sadness. <coughs> so many thoughts and feelings. I was a mess. And the only thing that made sense was the fast, heavy beating of my heart. I felt so vulnerable, so exposed to the world. I tried everything. I called the police. I googled until my fingers hurt. One dead end after another. The earth opened up, and I was falling into an endless black hole. For the first time in my life, suicide seemed like the only option. 758 followers on Twitter, and I'm sure many of you have more than that, so you know how this stuff works. I saw the gallery of faces staring at me, just like you guys are staring right now. What do they think of me? What do you think of me? I didn't know what to do. I remembered that I had recently read an article about a crime called revenge porn. Yeah. Revenge porn. And suddenly, I'm the victim? I've always been one of those, that'll never happen to me kind of people. Until it did. Twitter could have helped me, but only gave me a simple complaint form with a two week response time. The police could have helped me, but revenge porn wasn't a crime. And the one who always makes everything better in my life, my mother, could only try to comfort me. 
what are you thinking right now? Was this my fault? Did you ever think that all of these phones, all of these cameras could be used to hurt us? Probably not. I sure didn't. But why not? Two words, trust and consent. We trust that our partners would never take photos of us without our consent. In the age of the internet, we use text, email, and social media to connect, to communicate, and even to express intimacy. Electronic intimacy. It's still intimacy in a world where so many of us struggle to connect. But the problem is that our laws haven't caught up yet. So what are the laws that prevent people from harming each other on the internet? Unfortunately, there aren't many. Yes, free speech is wonderful. But revenge porn and online harassment are not. They're assault against real people and have deserve real consequences. Some of you may think <laughs> Some of you may think talking about a women's issue, right? But this is everyone's issue. This crime sees no gender, race, age, religion, or sexual orientation. And these actions don't always have to be vengeful to make them wrong. People post this stuff for money, popularity, or even as a sick joke. That's why this crime is more appropriately called non-consensual pornography. The fight against non-consensual pornography since my incident just this past New Year's Day has been phenomenal. Companies like Google, Twitter, and Facebook have finally taken action in their practices, their policies, and in their efforts to help the victims. Unfortunately, their efforts are not enough. We need to protect ourselves, and especially our children for how to deal with an attack. We teach our kids many things in life, like how to escape the house from a fire, or how not to talk to strangers. But now, we need to give them ways to cope with this nightmare as well. You want to hear about nightmares? Collecting this kind of evidence. Victims need to take screenshots of the incident, provide the exact time, date, and URL, and even ask a police officer to request the identity and IP address of the person who posted it from the website they posted it on, just so you have the chance to prove yourself in court. For me, it was almost impossible to even know what to do, let alone do it while I was in shock. Fighting for legislative and technological change isn't enough. We need to create a standard for internet decency. This incident shamed me, but I was not silenced. I was asked to tell my story at the Capitol building in Santa Fe, New Mexico, during the past legislative session. People need to understand the issue of revenge porn, because victims aren't fools. And perpetrators are using the internet to violate people's trust and consent. No one should have to go through what I did. House Bill 142 
unauthorized distribution of sensitive images makes the publication of such images a misdemeanor in the court of law. The bill passed both the House and the Senate unanimously. And on March 25th, 2015, Governor Susana Martinez signed the bill into law. <laughs> Making New Mexico now one of 24 states with some form of revenge porn legislation. You guys remember when all of this was happening to me? I wanted to die. Instead, I found my strength. And this New Year's Eve, I will welcome in the new year, knowing that no victim of revenge porn will have to face this nightmare alone. And that is knowledge worth fighting for.